Hello, folks, and welcome to Hi Fi News, etc. And I've just realized I've got Robert Palmer to your right. <laughs> and when I put this record up on the shelf, I had a stream of memories because I interviewed Robert Palmer. Uh, rest in peace, Robert Palmer. But I interviewed him, and he was as drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Absolutely politic. He got the interview done, though. <laughs> a very nice guy, Robert Palmer. But um, he could drink. <laughs> anyway, just came into my head. What have we got for you for this particular video? I'm still thinking of Robert Palmer. Focus, Paul, focus. So what have we got for you? Okay, we've got uh, trivia in a second. After that, we'll look at Hi-Fi News, of course. After that, I've got a new one. I try to keep these particular Friday videos lively, a bit of variety. So we've got a new section for you. It's uh, any other business. That's what it's called, any other business. And it's one of those sections where other Hi-Fi News, which are not really mainstream, so there's other Hi-Fi News, bits, bobs, odds and sods, slightly off-topic stuff. So there's a few of those. And we'll finish this review with yet another new section. Previews. I have got a little preview. It's just a small thing. It's not any, you know, it's a preview. So I'm going to not give you any depth. Well, I'll bring this thing to camera. You can have a little mooch, you can have a little look, and it will be something I'll more than likely be reviewing in the near-ish future. So let's get on with it, shall we? And trivia. And we're going to keep going with the history theme that we started last week. And the subject of this question is ABBA and their hit single, Waterloo. And the opening line of ABBA's Waterloo, their hit single, states that this is where Napoleon surrendered. In which modern country is the battlefield of Waterloo situated? So one more time, the opening line of Abba's Waterloo states that this is where Napoleon surrendered. In which modern country is the battlefield of Waterloo situated? Now, as ever, I am trusting you not to Google on this. Please, no internet research, because when it spoils it, it's far too easy, isn't it? So. Have a little think as you're watching this video. I will give you the answer at the end of the video, and then you will go, ah, oh, yes, I knew that. That kind of thing. So, for now, hi fi news. Does anybody remember Nakamichi? Does anybody remember the Nakamichi Dragon, which was a sort of title of varied technologies? Well, Nakamichi will soon be releasing the Nakamichi Dragon 11.4.6, a home surround sound system. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of this one yet, but if not, allow me to play you a video produced by Nakamichi. It's not too long, just over three minutes. Now, the accompanying soundtrack to this video is copyrighted, so I won't play that because I don't want to get into trouble. Instead, I'll give you a bit of a chat. I might even give you my tear-filled rendition of Old Shep to pass the time. Or maybe not. More to the point, the classic Japanese brand, Nakamichi, was and remains a legend for all fans of hi-fi. The company, all on its own, pushed the boundaries of sound quality, leading to new possibilities in the hi-fi industry. That was down to the genius that was, and still is, Nero Nakamichi. They produced, as a company, they produced a swathe of quality cassette decks during the 70s. Cassette decks which, right now, as I'm talking, remain desirable on the second-hand market. Products released under the Dragon label from Nakamichi, well, they were supposed to be the pinnacle of their design and technical expertise. 
Now, I personally own the company's Dragon cassette deck, but the company also released Dragon turntables or a turntable and a CD player. Nakamichi itself struggled in the digital age, though, and they were eventually bought by a Chinese holding company back in 1998, I think it was, called Grande or Grand Holdings. Now, the engineering genius behind the original Nakamichi hardware is still around. Nero Nakamichi is still producing super high-end hi-fi and surround sound systems. Priced way up in the stratosphere. And I'll put a link below if you fancy having a little look yourself. Now, I may not be able to afford any of his new products, but I'm just glad he's still around. So, it's the current Chinese owners of Nakamichi who are releasing this surround sound system, and you can see that here. And as you can also see, it's fully featured. This video actually does a decent job of explaining what the system has to offer, so I'm letting it run all for you. I'll also post some specs for you, and you can pause and study those at your leisure. You can pre-order the Dragon 11.4 0.6 home surround system in the second quarter of 2023. Prices, well, nothing concrete as yet, and I only have a dollar estimated price, but that will be somewhere in the region of £3,500, but I'm sure we'll get more specific prices soon. And for this surround sound, this new one, I'll put a link below in the description and you can check it out yourself. Next up, we've got more JBL because I can't get enough of JBL. And I know, well, I know we all can't get enough of JBL. So here's more JBL. <music> Specifically, we're looking at the 4329P powered loudspeaker. This new amplified speaker system combines streaming audio with wired and wireless connectivity options. The 4329P includes two speakers, each featuring a patented JBL 2409H 1 inch compression driver, a high definition imaging horn, and the JW200P 4. 8 inch pulp black paper cone woofer with a cast frame. Each speaker is powered by a 300 watt amplifier with 250 of those watts being pushed straight to the woofer and 50 watts to the compression driver. Both are controlled by a digital signal processor. The speaker's streaming engine provides both wired and wireless network audio capabilities via built-in Google Chromecast, Apple AirPlay 2, and Bluetooth 5.3 Aptex Adaptive Audio. A 24-bit 192 kHz DAC also supports MQA, while this speaker is also Rune ready. Connections include USB, optical 3.5mm stereo inputs, and XLR quarter-inch sockets for balanced connections. Color options natural walnut or if you fancy black walnut furniture grade wood veneer the 4329p will be available in the second quarter of 2023 prices well i've got three for you either four thousand five hundred dollars or three thousand four hundred and ninety nine pounds or three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine euros and that's per system pair JBL also suggests using the 4329P with the optional JS80 floor stands, so you can listen to the speakers at an optimal listening height. Those stands, well, I've seen them for sale for £175 a pair. Next up, we're looking at a UK outfit called Stack Audio, and they're producing what they called AUVA, that's A-U-V-A, -A, I think it's pronounced AUVA, isolators for your speakers.
Now, AUVA is an acronym, and that stands for Audio Vibration Absorber. And as I say, these are loudspeaker feet. And the idea is that they hold the speaker rigidly while handling any possible vibration and getting rid of that. So these feet use, and I quote, a patent pending particle impact dampening technology to dissipate vibration while holding the speaker rigidly. The feet have machined aluminium cases and inside are multiple cells and they contain, well, they contain particles, including things like tungsten. Vibrations excite the particles, creating movements and collisions that dissipate the energy through heat. The aim, an increase in sonic clarity. Now, at the same time, the rigid shell of the chassis holds the speaker securely. And I'll show you a couple of pictures so you know what I'm on about. The Orvas are designed and made in the UK, as I say, by Stack Audio. And there's two versions to choose from. You get the Orva 70 or the Orva 100. They are attached via supplied threaded bolts into the existing mounting holes on the underside of your loudspeakers. The Orvas are supplied with both carpet spikes and protective felt pads for use on solid floors. The Orva 70, well, that contains three internal cells for effective vibration absorption, while the Orva 100 has twice the surface area and five cells. The Orvas can be used with both stand mounted and floor standing loudspeakers. Both sizes are available now and you can order them direct from the Stack Audio website and I'll put a link below. If you're not sure about these feats or maybe you have doubts whether they'll work in your system, well, there's a try before you buy thing. That is, there's a 30 day trial period available. Prices, well, for the over 70, a set of four will cost you £420. A set of eight will cost you £840. For the over 100, a set of four will cost you £620. And a set of eight will cost you £1,240. Next up, well, any other business. Now, as I say, this new section ropes in a series of other hi-fi stories or slightly niche or slightly off-topic stories. Next up, we're looking at Sound Pete's Opera wireless earbuds. Now, a quick mention for these new earbuds that have just emerged from a Kickstarter campaign, and I'll put a link below if you want to see more. There's lots of information, images, and video footage there. They took my eye and my ear because they apparently support the LDAC codec, which is my codec of choice. But they also support active noise cancelling. They feature 12mm dynamic drivers and dual balanced armature drivers too, plus up to 33 hours total listening time. There's four microphones for voice calls included, plus touch controls to get them up and running. There's also app control support that features added EQs to change the nature of the sound flying into your ears. In terms of price, well, I have heard an Amazon US price of $99, and I'm sure there'll be more local Amazon prices emerging in the near future. Over to Audio-Technica now, and a couple of headphones, but slightly niche headphones, which is why they're not in the hi-fi news area. These are aimed at live streaming content creators. And I don't really see this kind of news elsewhere, so I thought I'd stick it here in case you're interested for some reason. These headsets are actually equipped with the same 45mm drivers that you'll find in the standard hi-fi M50X headphones, but they arrive with two sets of distinct ear pads. The M50X ear pads offer either improved isolation, which might be important. There's also mesh and leatherette ear pads that emphasize breathability and comfort. Both models use a cardioid condenser capsule adopted from the Audio-Technica 20 series of microphone designs on a flexible boom arm. Like I say, there's two 
headphone designs here. There's the ATH M50 X STS. This features a two meter cable with a three and a half millimeter headphone jack and XLR microphone connector for connection to an audio interface or a mixer. Plus, both of the ear pads I've just mentioned, and you can swap between them. The other headphone design is the ATH M50X STS USB, and that features an A to D converter supporting up to 24 bit 96K. Side tone circuitry lets you hear your voice in the headphones while you're using them. You also get two meters of cable again, but this one ends with a USB-A connection. There is a USB-A to USB-C adapter included, and that's ideal for connection to PCs and Macs. Prices, well, the STS version is priced at 169 pounds or 199 euros. The USB version is priced at 199 pounds or 229 euros. And finally, before we get to the trivia answer, we've got a quick preview. So, another new occasional section for you. This is the preview, just to provide you with a quick peek onto possible future reviews. Now, do you remember I reviewed the Majestic DAC, and I'll put a little link up yonder, that was from the UK outfit Graham Slee. Now, I'm a big fan of that one. I gave it a deeply groovy 9 out of 10 award. I seem to recall. Anyway, I have here one of the company's famed phono amplifiers. You could say that Graham Slee's bread and butter business is the phono amplifier designs. So, if you're going to cover the company at all, you can't really ignore their phono amps. Now, I have here in my review queue one of those very phono amplifiers. In this case, it's the Accession. And you can buy a moving magnet version of the Accession for £936 or a moving coil version for £1,200. Now, I have chosen to review the moving magnet version because I've reviewed several moving coil phono amps around the £1,000 mark, but it's been a well, it's been quite a while since I've actually looked at a high end moving magnet design and a specialist moving magnet only design at that. And I can always do the moving coil version later on if you want it. And if you do want it, please let me know. Now, the Accession arrives with its own external power supply called the PSU-1. But you can also upgrade that power supply with something called the PSU-1 Enigma. And that thing is priced at £385. So, in my review, I'll be looking at the phono amplifier, of course. But, as a bonus, I'll also be reviewing the upgradable power supply. Now, when can you expect to see this review, this mythical review? Well, I have a queue. I always have a queue. I always have a long queue of products. And this is in that queue, at least it's in the queue. And in terms of dates, well, you're looking at the moment, end of March, maybe-ish. But be assured, it's on the list. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And before we go, you will be looking for a trivia answer. I'm going to say question. Answer. And our history question was, and still is, the opening line of Abba's Waterloo states that this was where Napoleon surrendered. In which modern country is the battlefield of Waterloo situated? And the answer is... Belgium. That's where Waterloo is. The battlefield of Waterloo actually lies 10 miles south of Brussels, in what is now the nation state of Belgium. At the time of the battle in 1815, Belgium didn't quite exist. Well, it didn't exist at all, actually, because it was part of what was then called the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. 
Despite what Bjorn and Benny wrote, Napoleon did not actually surrender at Waterloo. He actually retreated after the arrival of the Prussians, and after failing to rally support in Paris, he abdicated four days after the battle. So now you know. Anyway, that's your lot. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different Hi-Fi News etc. I like to keep them bubbly and lots of variety, if I can. So, goodness knows what I'll be doing next Friday. Anyway, thank you for staying to the end of this particular video. And if you can do me a favour, down below, if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons, I'd be rather happy. And also you'll find other links down there, including my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join and my website which has all kinds of stuff you won't find on this channel plus my patreon page and if you can support me on patreon i'd be ever so grateful because it keeps this channel going plus there's all kinds of exclusive stuff over there enough rambling i will see you on sunday we have a splendiferous hi-fi review for you on sunday glasses are falling down and i hope to see you there I hope to have your company until then folks Bye-bye for now.